But right now, we're talking about a heart health program on country. It's being trialled in East Gippsland. And here to tell us more is Ash Munro and Carolyn Alkermate from the Aboriginal Health Unit at Bensdale Regional Health Service. Big good morning to you both. Hi, hey, good morning. Now, uh, I might start with you, Ash. Can you explain to me um, what this program is and, you know, what's the overall aim? Um, so, I guess... Carolyn sort of has, I'll start with a little bit of history, but Carolyn's been working on like a cardiac community program forever. And so when she sort of come into the team, this was one of the ideas that she wanted to work on. And essentially it's sort of bringing all the education components and, um, you know, heart health uh, back to the community. So the program's like co-designed with our ACHO Muji in Orbos. And the participants get to sit down with the team and decide, you know, where they want to go and what they want to learn that day, um, you know, through activity. And the big focus is, is that they're sort of on their turf and that creates that sort of ease in environment where they're able to sort of, um, you know, sit down and learn and also bring in, you know, their family as well so that they're educated on people who have had major sort of cardiac related issues. Um, but if... Kaz wants to sort of add her little sparkle to it because she's been running with it um, for quite a while now. Thanks, Ash. Yeah, so it's really fantastic. The whole team of five in the Aboriginal Health Unit, it's been a really big team effort. And we have partnered with um, one of the Aboriginal community-controlled health organisations in all Boston, that's Mwuchi, and they're fantastic. So they have that connection with the Aboriginal community already. And so really we've just, we had some funding from Gippsland Primary Health Network. So we were able to go up to all Boston and say, hey, we've got this money. We're gonna do this six week program. Tell us what you want, which they did. And so that's really empowering Mm -hmm. rather than us say, right, we're going to teach you about this, that and the other. Because that has shown it doesn't really work. So once we do the big brainstorm and we work out exactly what community want, then we work with Muji and come up. It's like a roller coaster ride, isn't it, really? (laughs) Because we have to then find all these cultural resources from all around Australia, evidence-based information. But it's a little snippet of that while we're hanging out down the beach, um, treasure hunts. Uh, we're going to do emu egg carving. Oh, cool. Heaps of really cool things. Yeah, right. It's been really well received. Oh, fantastic. So in terms of, you know, giving that education um, and being able to work kind of hand in hand mm. with the Indigenous community, how does that help to close the gap? So with closing the gap, um, you know, health is not just a physical thing. We need to look at the social determinants of health. There is so much more to it. And so it's about that social connection. It's about a cultural connection, that togetherness, that empowerment, you know, that people have control. Community know what they need. And so we need to respond to their needs. And um, a lot of the research suggests that this is the way to go and so we're just following that research, listening to the people and delivering what they're asking for and I think that that's the point of difference with this program. Yeah. And yeah. I, th- I think with Close the Gap too, I mean, we it's been around since 2007, 2008 and, like, as currently, like, we stand, maybe five targets out of 19 are actually on track to actually be sort of completed So I think there's seven more years left to, you know, meet the other targets. But I think at the moment, I think in regards to health, we need to have a real look at, well, clearly things aren't working. What other options or how else can we go about, you know, really meeting these targets? And I think um, the co-design, which is like the big word, Mm -hmm. um, is I think the way to go. It just gives the power back to... I guess the people to make decisions on you know what they want to learn and how they want to learn and where they want to learn it sort of thing um and it's a whole community response isn't it like um every every, the education goes to all of community it's not just you've got a heart condition you need this education Mm. it's like let's share it with the whole community yeah yeah okay yeah so 
part of it is, you know, a whole heap of different things. You said sitting on a beach, so they went to Cape Conran for a walk, a discussion about smoke-free living, and tests on a smoke eliser. What is a smoke eliser? Ah, uh, uh, yeah. So a smoke eliser. Um, did you make this up? What? No, this, sorry, I did no, it. I did joking. it. I love it. I love it. It's such a really good um, motivating tool. Mm. So what happens is you, it's a bit like a breatho, you know, and you blow yeah. into this thing. And it gives you a reading and... Uh, so if you smoke, you have a lot of carbon um, monoxide in that you breathe out, and so it gives you a reading. Green is good, orange is you know not so good, and red's really bad. Right. And so the thing is, like with the if it's really bad with carbon monoxide, that can make your blood stickier. So that's the effects of the smoking. It's a here and now. Red, I've got to do something about this smoking. Okay. Um, because it's going to increase your risk of having a heart attack. So it's very powerful, I've found. Um, and so we can be down the beach, and that's actually where we were, and people were passing this around and could see exactly what's going on in their body right yeah. here and now. So it was either really good or not so good. And then so with the whole program, it's not so... Um, we're not doing blood pressures. We're not. That's the only really technical thing, but it's more of a motivator. And from that, we had somebody that we referred to Aboriginal Quit Line. Oh, so and actually, the community asked for that um, smoke eliser to be in this second program that we're about to to run. Okay. So so we'll do that again. Okay. So what's in this second program? Oh yeah. So we've got the emu egg carving, mm. and we've got um, we're going to do a treasure hunt and look for some some wood to make some clap sticks um we get some guest speakers so oh we do way upper way upper so that's a connection to country um mind body spirit and a, which is accredited as well so every single thing we do has a cultural lens over it um and we also get some guest speakers with our cardiac liaison nurses we get um the physio from Bensdale Hospital is going to come up and we're going to look at doing some exercises on country. Great. Yeah, so it's jam-packed, it's exciting and it's all different from the first program. So in terms of, so how are you actually recruiting people to come along? So it was so successful that last time that yeah. all of those participants wanted to come back and do it again and because the program is completely different, all the topics we'll be talking about, all the places we're visiting um we've also want to extend it now because the first was a pilot so now we want to um offer it to other elders groups within east gippsland so we just chatted to the elders this week from gjack so i think they're going to join us and we'll offer it to other elders groups as well great because the elders are so important so it's good to have them included especially at the start of a program like this mm. i know it's not directly related but i've been talking um to um, some friends I've made out at Lake Ties, Aboriginal Trust and people like that, and they're, so, they're struggling to find mental health supports. And it just got me thinking then, mental health supports would tie in so closely with heart health because, obviously, if you're not feeling great mentally, you know, you might be more inclined to smoke. It's a stress reliever. You might be more inclined to drink. That's also not, you know, you might be more inclined to do, I guess maybe even be more sedentary so how do you do you address mental health when in this program or yeah definitely yeah i think it was one of the sort of things that come up early on in the first sort of pilot program we had one participant who sort of completed like i guess an initial form and one of the ones that were flagged was the sort of mental health side of things so we do the best that we can um we just supported them on to the correct services um, in that aspect. Um, but yeah. Yeah, because with the um, funding that we have, we do do surveys before and after, and we do do some, ab we've got some surveys that are Aboriginal specific as well, so the questions are appropriate. And so there is, as I said, the support services if there's any mental health concerns. But uh, interesting, like with Muji, they've been talking, like, this is a cardiac focus program mm. with a cultural lens but they've been talking we could really do this say with for to support mental health mm. program so it'd be the same model that you would use but you would just have a lot of stuff around to improve your mental health mm. but just being out on country 
doing cultural activities, being around, you know, your, your, your fa- friends, your community, and that direct access to the health service, I think that's a bit of a winner. Mindfulness on the beach. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's a good one. Yeah. Well, that's what Way Up is about. So yeah. that's been shown to improve your mental health. And, and we've got such a beautiful, mm. beautiful sites up there. So it's a strengths-based model. So we're just going out, showcasing the best of East Gippsland, making the most Lucky you. I <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn Alcomode and Ash Munro from Bedsdale Regional Health Service. Thank you very much for joining me this morning. Before you leave, was there anything else you wanted to say at all? Uh, yeah, so today at Bensdale Regional Health Service, we have our annual Close the Gap Day. starts at 12. So if you're interested in Aboriginal health or you're curious, um, come up, have a yarn. We'll have some pretty cool things on our store. Um, we'll have some food that has um, our kitchen actually has done for us, so we're quite excited this year um, for what they've come up with. But What yeah. is it? Um, so they come up with some, like, little mini beef pies, but they've been, like, um, seasoned with, like, n- um, native herbs and stuff like that. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's delicious. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I remember popping out and seeing, you know, you know, um, Kevin... Oh, uh, yeah. Kevin Murray? Is yes. it Kevin Murray, the yeah. chef? Yeah, at, um, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Um, Amazing. Yes, out at Glarwac. Yeah. And, oh, the stuff he comes up with, the bush tomatoes, and, you know, <laughs> yes. that's just fantastic. So, actually, with Kevin going out there to Glarwac, that's going to be our celebration, final six-week celebration out there with our six-week program. Oh, cool. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, enjoy. Yes. I'm a bit jealous I'm not going to get one of these beef pies. But, um, <laughs> Thanks, Vic. But I'll live vicariously through you. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.